Jello Beats, holla at me. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. So, hope you're all good. I'm having a good week so far. It's obviously my peak week. Everything's going smooth. Hit a pretty low way in this morning. Not a new low, but pretty low. And I think, considering the pictures that I took this morning with my posing, I'm feeling like the best I have looked thus far, which is very exciting. Anyway, to get into the topic of the video, and it is a call for higher protein in gaining phases. So, by gaining phase, we mean bulking, we mean massing, we mean putting on body weight, actively pushing up our body weight. Now, the reasoning behind this video is that there are a few limitations when it comes to gaining macros or the calories at which you will need to gain weight on. For some people, this video might not breed too much relevance because the generic recommendations of sort of anywhere between that sort of 2.3 grams per kilogram or if you work in pounds, 1.25 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. Now, for most, like I said, those generic recommendations will be absolutely fine, and you'll get efficient protein or sufficient protein, and your daily requirements will be hit, and you'll be in a perfect scenario or perfect environment to be putting on lean tissue. Now, however, gets to the point for some people, especially some of my clients, should see some of my clients' macros. As you push up calories in the gaining phase because as your body weight increases, your RMR will increase in turn with that to a point where obviously insulin sensitivity gets to the point where potentially you get gaining too much body fat and your ability to uptake nutrients actually starts to dwindle away and that's where you start to need a mini cut and go backwards. But for the most part, your resting metabolic rate will go up, it will increase as you increase calories. Alongside that, your recover, like the demands on recovery, go it up. Why do they go up? It's because you're progressing your lifts. When you progress your lifts in the gym, you create larger recovery demands. Your epoch goes up, everything goes up. So the calorie requirements for you to recover from your training and for you to actually feed the body, which is heavier, feed a heavier body, means more calories. So, when you do push calories up, we normally see a raise in carbohydrates. I am definitely a coach which prefers to absolutely maximize your ability to raise carbohydrates in an off season. I find that once dietary fats get to a certain level, and there's no special level, but once they get to a certain level, I kind of just leave them there. My rationale behind that is because I find people, unless we're at the really tail end and we're really having to do everything we can to gain some more body weight, or we have a real hard gainer, or someone that has just very high NEAT levels, or generally a very, very fast metabolism, once fat gets to a certain point, it starts to make people, people feel very groggy, very run down, kind of quite sort of like just stomach, like doesn't feel so good you feel not so good. And that's because fats blunt digestion. So they slow down digestion rates of all your other nutrients. And they just tend to make you feel fuller and more satiated for longer. Now, that's my preference on raising carbohydrates. Also, getting carbohydrates as high as possible before a diet is kind of a good idea because it's nice to be able to diet on a decent amount of carbohydrates because they fuel a lot of your weight training activities. So, but what happens with carbohydrates? Carbohydrates bring with them trace proteins. With trace proteins, our protein from just carbohydrates goes up when we increase carbohydrates. So for example, if you're having two bagels post-workout and you're putting them into my fitness pal, guess what? It's about 18 grams of protein there. Now, some coaches will not count the trace protein from carbohydrates. I do. The reason I do is because, well, they count. <laughs> They're still calories. So you, uh, for me, I still count them. However, 
I combat this issue with potentially raising overall protein intake from your actual, like, so your actual protein intake per day goes up to allow for more bioavailable sources of protein to come in. Because obviously, protein sources from bagels aren't the ideal protein source over a higher leucine protein or a higher leucine content protein like meat, fish, chicken, salmon, uh, sorry, fish, salmon, um, other things like dairy products, cottage cheese, uh, yogurts, whey protein, whey isolate, etc. Things like that, they're a better quality source of protein. So essentially, what we need to look out for is our, in our day, with our gaining calories, are we getting at least four, Eric Helms recommends three to five, but I'd say at least four to five, if not six when gaining, nice servings or boluses of protein from quality sources. If you are not, it's probably a good idea to just raise your overall protein intake so that you can start to fit in some good quality protein sources in those windows, in those boluses. Reason being, like I said, bioavailability of the protein source does matter. Your protein quality does matter in terms of getting you in, a, in, a, in the best environment possible for muscle growth. And again, with that bioavailability comes leucine content. How good of a protein source are you having? And quite a lot of the time, when your carbohydrates are high, you're going to be getting a lot of protein from just trace carbs. Other point, final point, is that, well, actually, second to final point, is that when protein intake is high, we're likely to be decently satiated. So for some, actually, people do struggle to adhere to gaining macros. It's interesting. So what I do tend to, tends to be post-show, I raise protein intake quite quite significantly. Now in the in the research as well, it has been shown that protein as a macronutrient is very is the least likely macronutrient to be stored as body fat. So if anything, if we push protein up, we gain satiety or we gain a greater level of satiety alongside potentially not gaining as much body fat. An interesting study that's just been done with Dr. Bill Campbell and Lauren Collin is, and I'll link the video below for you to watch, they've run off-season bikini competitors and figure competitors on, on um, one with a very high protein intake, 2.4 grams per kilogram, and one with a low protein intake, 1.1 grams per kilogram. And what they did was they ran very similar, if not exactly the same training protocols. They ran food diaries. So the only difference was that one group were consuming 400 calories extra from protein, and that was it. Carbs and fat were the same, I believe. What they found was in the group that consumed the higher protein, they gained significantly more muscle mass significantly. I think the difference was over the four weeks, like four pounds versus one pound, I think, which is crazy. That's like absurd. So the research hasn't been published yet, but just that watching that video is very, very cool to watch. Um, and I think that breeds the relevance of obviously making sure you, you are consuming adequate protein, but my points were sort of slightly different to the study. I'm not just reiterating their study, but I am mentioning it because it's very cool. And I did see it earlier in the week. So make sure you watch that video, guys, and take on board what they had to say. Uh, and that will be really cool once once that gets published. I think Dr. Bill Campbell is working with Brad Schoenfeld to, to publish that. But yeah, that's my video for today, guys. So just think about things. Are you getting a good amount of your protein per day from quality sources? If you're getting a lot of it from pasta, which is inherently high protein, uh, bagels, breads, things like this, they all contain protein. So if you're checking on my protein, uh, on my fitness pal, be careful. Like, just look. Like, are you consuming good quality protein sources? Because it does matter, guys. It does matter. So guys, any questions on this, please give me a shout. I'll link that video with Dr. Bill and Lauren Collin in the info box below. Recommend checking out Lauren's channel as well. She is epic. Uh, so yeah, any questions, guys, give me a shout, and we will speak in the next video. See you in a bit.